Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 41. And Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make up a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she has to live on. Our, our first point today as we are talking about what it means to be a godly giver is that true giving comes from the heart. It's not about how much you have. It's not about how much you can give. When you have a lot, it's easy to give a lot. And Jesus says it's, it's not so much about extravagant giving, letting everybody see how much of a giver you are. It's really all about the heart issue. And for Jesus, the heart is the key to all of religious activity and faith. And one of Jesus' famous expressions is, you have heard that it was said, and then he gives an old command, and then he says, but I say to you, and then he tweaks the old commandment for a new way of being. And the new way of being is always about the heart. It's not about the behavior, it's about the motivation behind the behavior. For example, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, it has been said, thou shall not kill. That's a very famous commandment. It's one of the 10 big ones. We know that one. And Jesus takes it a step further. He says, let's make it about the heart. You've heard it said, thou shall not kill, but I'm gonna tell you, don't even be angry. Another time Jesus says, you have heard it was said, thou shall not commit adultery. But I tell you, do not even look lustfully at another person. See, Jesus says it's not just about behavior that can be seen, it's about issues of the heart. And when it comes to giving and generosity, a lot of times people are all about being seen. Up until this last year, I didn't even know that there were content creators whose whole shtick was about generosity and, and giving, where they filmed themselves randomly giving money and prizes to different people on the street. I didn't know that was a thing. My kids had to introduce me to content creators who do this kind of thing. And while it's great to give people money, and I'm not knocking generosity at all, not, not one bit. I think we are supposed to be generous people. Really, it comes down to, are we giving for performance? Or are we giving because we feel that God has called us to be generous and giving people. It's really about the heart. So as Jesus stands watching all of the people at the temple giving, he sees rich people giving lots of money and he sees this poor widow giving her last two coins. And so he calls his disciples for a little life lesson. It's like, hey, look at this. When they have a lot, it's easy to give a lot. She's got nothing and she's giving everything she has. It's not about the sizes of the gift. It's really about the heart behind the giver. That's what it's really about. St. Paul writes this, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That, I love that passage. There are a lot of people who accuse the church of always talking about money, always asking for money. And you may have heard people criticize Christianity for this. Oh, I don't like to go to church because the preacher's always asking for money. And there are many churches that, that do ask for money because the reality is that churches have to pay bills. There are utilities that they have to pay, lights, uh, water, uh, salaries. There, there are bills that have to be paid, sure. And sometimes churches go way overboard with asking for money, where it feels like the church is constantly asking people to give. And so what Paul is saying here is that when it comes to Christian giving, 
when it comes to charity and generosity, each person should decide on their own what they should give without reluctance or compulsion. So if someone is giving and they're like, I really don't want to, also don't do it. Don't give reluctantly. Give what God has led you to give. If you feel that God is saying you should give X amount, then give it. And if you feel reluctant about it, Paul's saying, hey, no one should give reluctantly. And then he says, or under compulsion, no one should feel compelled to give. It is not okay for spiritual leaders to guilt people into giving. That is what we would call spiritual abuse. And the Bible is completely 100% against spiritual abuse of any kind. It is not okay to make people feel compelled to be generous and charitable. Paul says that is completely against the heart of giving. Because God loves a cheerful giver. As God has blessed you and God has brought you to a point of wanting to give, Paul says, then give. And if it is reluctant, if you feel compelled, Paul says, eh, we're going we're gonna to back down from that. So really, it is all about the heart. The second thing that I think this passage teaches us is that gift giving requires sacrifice. As Jesus says in verse 44, for what they did, they did out of their abundance. But what she did, she gave everything she had, all she had to live on. You know, think about it like a candle. We light candles every week in service. For a candle to give light, it has to burn itself. It gives of itself to provide light. And true giving has some level of self-sacrifice to be meaningful and significant. It is easy to give when we have plenty of it, but it is a real testament of faith and love to give when it comes at a cost to us. I only have two of these things and I want you to have half of what I've got. Or completely, I've only got one of this, but I know that you need it, so I'm giving it to you. That kind of gift has got real incredible weight behind it. That kind of sacrificial gift giving is the most powerful kind of gift you can give anybody else. Powerful gift giving requires some amount of sacrifice, which is why it's so important when we realize how much God loves us to see the kind of sacrifice Christ made for us. That's what the cross is about. You want to talk about gift giving. Jesus gave that ultimate gift, he gave of himself so that what was broken in us could be fixed. And the third thing that I want us to see today is that God sees the heart and rewards accordingly. Jesus wraps up this section in verse 43. He says, this widow has put in more than all of those. For she has put in everything. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. You see, God sees the heart, no matter what other people see. Humans like to do things for clout. We do. Long before there was social media, people were still trying to get clout. And so we do things publicly. We let people know how fantastic we are. There are some people who, who let you know that they're fasting or they're in their time of prayer. And Jesus was not about seeking clout through religious practices. It, it's not okay to try to make people feel that you're super special and that you're super religious. It's like, don't perform your faith publicly for other people. Do it privately between you and God. If you want to pray, don't stand on the street corner shouting out your prayers. Go in quiet and pray where only God can hear you, nobody else. You want to give? You want to be charitable? That's fine. Don't do it where other people can see you. Do it in private where no one else knows what you're doing because you're not doing it for clout. You're doing it for God. Whoa. If 
the world lived by this, like half of social media would be shut down. No more giving for clout, no more giving for attention and recognition. Just give quietly, privately, so that no one else even knows what you're doing. Because we don't see that a lot. And we do see a lot of people doing things for attention. We do see people saying, look how good I am. Look at all the great stuff I did. Look at all the money I donated, all the stuff that I gave away. And Jesus says, this is between you and God. Real gift giving is about your heart and not about who sees you. It doesn't matter if people can see it because God knows. So I'm not asking for your money. I am saying, I believe God calls us to be people of generosity, to have generous and giving spirits. And that doesn't just mean with our finances, it could mean with your time. You can be generous with your time with other people. You can be generous with other things in your life, with your talents or your abilities. I once heard a preacher say, when it comes to gift giving, it's not just about money. It's time, treasure, and talent, the three T's. You can give up your time, you can give your treasure, you know, open up your, your bank and, and give your money, or your talent. What do you have an ability to do that you can gift to somebody else? You see, being a generous person isn't just about our finances, it's about our lifestyle and how we choose in our hearts to behave towards other people. Knowing that God sees and values our heart and what we do in giving to other people. God calls us to be giving and generous people, to look for ways to make sacrifices for others that truly represents the love of Jesus within us. Not because it's just a good thing to do, and it is a good thing to do. It feels good to give to other people, but because this is the character of God. So, as Paul says, God loves a cheerful giver. Let us all be cheerful givers. Not because we feel compelled to or forced to do something, but because God's love has so moved our hearts that we want to do the same for other people. And we trust that our Heavenly Father sees what is done in secret, even when nobody else sees the goodness of what we do. We trust that God still sees and that God will reward us accordingly, even if we are never rewarded here on this earth. You may never get that kind of clout on earth, but God sees your heart. And that's what he really cares about.